When you think back to the gold rush of the 1800s in San Francisco, the people who made the most money were the platform enablers. They were the ones who sold the pictures, shovels, pans, and jeans. And that's how Levi Strauss came to be. The analogy that we can use today is NVIDIA because, well, you own it, so you should be grinning broadly. Is this analogy defying logic to you, or does it make perfect sense? No, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but reaching $3 trillion on an intrinsic value basis is pretty difficult. Having said that, if you were creating the ideal momentum company from scratch, NVIDIA would be it, and it has an amazing story, because they've set the stage and have a market that adds to the mix, a CEO who stays true to the tale, and avoids distractions can meet expectations in the short run. I mean I think that you you're seeing one of the great momentum plays of all time playing our front of you NVIDIA, because they are the, the dominant pick and shovel provider, so the question is well, what are we going to use these picks and shovels to create, are we going to find gold? And I think the question is unclear, and where will that gold be found, will it be found inside of a big tech company, or will it be found inside of a startup? If you look inside of where these resources are being used inside of big tech, it is to completely scorch the earth on the economic value of large models, and I think that that's very very good for all of the startups that come after it. So what do I mean by this you know, we were all so wrapped around the axle around chat GPT, and then GPT in general, and now you know if you look at the quality of Llama Llama 2, Basically, these big companies have decided, no, we're just going to make all these models extremely good, extremely useful, and very, very free. And so a lot of the resources are going there to subsidize economic subsidize, and by implication, economically destroy the value of that category that's going to be good for startups. And so the question is, what will you then build on top of these quasi-free, almost free tools? And so one area that I have been looking at for a while is in computational biology, I think that that clip that you're talking about was just me talking with or Z just around the ability to compute large complex spaces with very information, it's not it's it's a very difficult task today, but tomorrow in an AI model that you can train you can literally characterize every single molecular permutation, you could imagine you combine it with something like alpha fold, and you can understand protein folding, and all of a sudden, you can sequentially start to put tools together that could theoretically give you much higher probability, guessing for specific compounds that could actually cure disease. A different version of that is a company that I started with a few other people. I tweeted that out. We've made some pretty significant progress there, primarily in the area of material science, and we have one candidate that, if it works, we don't know yet, could be pretty revolutionary. So in my opinion, a lot of the money that NVIDIA makes today will be money well spent because it will go to the big guys, big tech plus Tesla, who will then create some really foundational platform technologies with it, whether it's Dojo or FSD. Whether it's the full platform inside of Tesla that is the cameras, plus the inference, plus the training for all forms of physical world interaction, whether it's Llama 2, and all of that stuff will be given away, essentially I think open. Source quasi-free to the ecosystem over the next few years, and I think that will be a really important moment, which will create hundreds of new companies doing really clever and cool things, so we haven't yet seen the big breakout company yet. And so I think that right now most of this capex is going to the big guys, but the dividends of all the work that these big guys are doing will be seen over the next few years in the startups that get started in the next four or five years this industry is going to be producing intelligence. And what it takes is is a energy, and of course, a lot of great computer science, and and uh, uh, large computing systems that NVIDIA makes and so, so we've got we've got to make sure that that uh, everybody understands the needs coming the opportunities of it, the challenges of it and um, and do it in the other uh, most efficient and a uh, scalable way, we can well that of course was NVIDIA CEO Jensen Wong speaking to CNBC outside the White House today. He was there for a meeting about the outlook for AI and how to meet the energy demand needed to power that industry and video it's good to see you again. This week, we heard a lot from Jensen, whether it was in the business suit or the leather jacket. What was your biggest takeaway from either communicative copia out here in San Francisco or from what he said outside the White House today? Yeah, look, I think he's right. Shar is making a huge comeback. Top chip analyst Bernstein, Stacy Raskin, says it remains one of the best names in the industry. You're right, the stock has been volatile over the past few weeks, 
due to concerns about Blackwell's next-generation platform, delays, sustainability of demand, and other issues. However, based on what we can currently see, demand is still off the charts, meaning that their customers are unable to get enough of what they are providing. As time goes on, it's almost impossible to have too much compute, and you know that they are the ones providing the majority of it at this time. Point um, I think the concerns around Blackwell delays which was from a few weeks ago, those have sort of proven to be mostly a nothing burger, they've got a good amount of that billions of dollars of Blackwell revenue, ramping in key 4, will have all of next year to ramp that platform, as well am I, I still think that this this one has legs, I still think it has room to run you know, he, he described the demand that they're seeing when he was on stage yesterday, with with David Solomon is has still been great, he also talked about Stacy, I think something more powerful, and that's the idea of this installed base, that they have whether it's through gaming, or supercomputing the likes of which we always talk about relative to Apple, but not so much as it relates to NVIDIA, the implication being that it doesn't even matter really about some of the competitors who are out there because that the customers of NVIDIA are just going to keep coming back only for updated chips that, that they produce throughout the years, yes. So this this gets into the concept of, of what's known as the ecosystem, so it's an issue like a lot of their competitors, like the pitches you know, we have a chip that's better than NVIDIA, which by the way is always open for debate. But even if it were true it, it's probably not enough, it's not just about the chip, it's the chip, and it's the software, and it's the hardware, and it's the systems engineering and everything that goes around it, that makes it very very easy to just buy their NVIDIA stuff, and then adopt it and install it. And it's up you can be up and running in days without having to monkey around with anything else many of their other competitive stuff you can buy it, and you try to s, and it may be months before you're up and running with it, we we've even seen evidence of this you know in AMD, now they gave recently, they they, they just bought um ZT systems that was to gain the systems expertise that NVIDIA themselves are sort of built up organically and's been.